Welcome to your home garage and in this video I'm going to show you how to maintain a battery charge through your power port or going old school also known as your cigarette lighter. So there are two main types of charging systems and sometimes the words get interchanged. You may have heard of trickle chargers. Now the main purpose here is a trickle charger provides a constant current all the time. Basically, it doesn't know when the battery is charged, and if it's not taken off in time, the battery acid inside will boil and bubble. So a trickle charger is not what you want for a long-term storage. What we're going to be using is a tender or a maintainer. This is a smart device and will charge the battery only when it needs it. After it's done charging, it'll shut off and monitor the battery state. When the battery discharges, which it will, and loses about 20%, then this will charge the battery back up to full and wait again. So its primary purpose is to slowly charge the battery and prevent overcharging. Especially if you're going to be storing the vehicle for a period of time, so basically maintaining a full charge prevents your battery from becoming sulfated and inoperable. Now there are two things to keep in mind with a plug-in method. The car circuitry must have a lighter socket that is live and you can easily test this with any device. And the charge rate must be kept low enough not to blow a fuse associated with the lighter socket, which is often about 20 amps and this one has an output of 2 amps so we're good to go. Battery tenders help to save you money on battery replacement and these are commonly used to charge batteries at a low capacity. This means that it tends to be slower when providing energy to the battery. And because it doesn't support a quick charge, this is perfect as a maintenance tool. These can maintain the charge of cars, boats, ATVs, and RVs. So you can leave the charger connected to the battery for quite a long time without having to worry about the battery overheating or getting damaged. So as you store your vehicle, batteries naturally discharge when they're not used for a period of time. After that, sulfide starts to form in the batteries, which makes them unusable. Intelligent charging prevents batteries from becoming sulfated, which prolongs the life of the battery. And sulfation occurs when the battery is deprived of a full charge. And this can even happen with starter batteries in cars driven just in the city with load-hungry accessories, or a motor that's just idling at low speed cannot charge a battery fully. Battery tenders also have regulators that ensure the battery won't overcharge or cause any damage. It basically tries to make the recharge rate and discharge rate equal to each other so that it maintains a full charge status. And that usually consists of a box where the controls and indicators can be found. And there are different kinds. Some plug into your cigarette lighter. Some clip directly to your battery terminals. And if you don't have access to power because your vehicle is outside, then a solar battery tender is what you need. Even if you have a car that is being used or driven only once a week, then it is advisable that you use a battery tender to maintain a full charge. Now let's review some key features. Now, I'm not promoting this particular brand. You can source whatever fits your needs, but make sure at the very least it has some of the key requirements. First, that it's ideal for charging and maintaining your battery. And it also has a built-in intelligent microprocessor, which makes charging a lot easier and safer. And that it could automatically switch from full charge to maintenance mode to maintain the batteries during prolonged periods of storage without overcharging or damaging the battery. And this multi-stage charging provides a more thorough battery charge. Make sure that it's suitable for all types of 12 volt lead acid batteries and the bonus would be including gel cell and AGM. Now this one includes three different quick connect options. Clamps, ring terminals, and the 12 volt accessory plug, which is what I like to use. And it's nice to also have the built-in mounting tabs if you want to permanently attach this to a bracket. And on this one, the LED indicators provide a charge status and warn of reverse polarity connections just in case the clamps or ring terminals were accidentally placed. This won't work if the leads are crossed. 
Now you also want to get the right amps relative to the size of your battery. So the rule of thumb is 10% or under of your total battery's amp hour capacity. An average car battery has the capacity of around 48 amps, which means that fully charged, it delivers one amp for 48 hours, two amps for 24 hours, and so on. So if you had a 48 amp hour battery, four to five amp chargers would be perfectly fine. But if this were a 20 amp charger, then that would likely lead to overcharging. Now this is a 60 amp battery, so I could go up to a six amp charger if needed. So at two amps, this is absolutely perfect. So keep it slow and steady by following the 10% or under rule of thumb. Now before I go ahead and plug this in for the winter, I'm gonna go ahead and conduct a couple of simple tests with my multimeter to make sure that the battery is in good state. Now due to the way the batteries discharge, it's important to test the battery after it's been sitting for at least an hour to get what's called the resting voltage. Or just turn the headlights on for two minutes to get rid of any surface charge the battery may have with your car turned off. Also make sure your battery terminals are tight and clean. Now go ahead and set your multimeter to 15 to 20 volts. DC voltage is indicated with a solid line and a dash line just above the V. Also make sure the car and lights are off. And you're gonna start by connecting the multimeter to the positive and negative battery terminals. And this will now show the voltage of your battery. And if you're getting a reading with a minus in front of it, then you've got the probes the wrong way. Now the resting voltage should be ideally no lower than 12.4 volts, which would represent about a 75% charge. I think below that, the battery needs to be charged before testing. One thing to bear in mind is that all modern day cars experience what's called parasitic loss, where something electrical drains the battery even when the engine is turned off. So systems in your car can still draw on power even if they're turned off. So if you suspect that this is killing your battery during storage, you may either disconnect the battery or just remove it. And 12.6 plus volts is 100% charged. And now we'll check for surface drain. So place both probes on the positive and negative terminal. And a zero reading will indicate zero voltage drop, which is exactly what you want. Next, the dirt that collects on the battery can become conductive and slowly drain the battery. Now, I'm not too worried about this one because it is inside the trunk and covered, but we're gonna test it nonetheless. So with the positive lead on the terminal, just move the negative probe around on various places of the battery case. And what you're looking for is a zero or near zero voltage reading. And if you are getting a voltage reading, just go ahead and clean the battery and then retest because you don't want any significant drain on your battery while it's in storage. And a combination of baking soda and water is perfect for cleaning your battery. And now that I know that my battery isn't losing any voltage, let's go ahead and plug in the battery tender, which is relatively easy. First, you'll want to start off by plugging it into the cigarette lighter or power port and then your electrical outlet. Now the charger converts the electricity into power that can be stored in your car battery. Also make sure that it's in a vented area and don't put a case over it. So just set it and forget it. So make sure you help to keep this channel going by hitting that like button, of course sharing the video with a friend, and please comment below as I reply to all. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Your Home Garage. Thank you.